Okay, hello. Hi, Dr. Curatola. Hello, Stephen. How are you? Sorry uh, for the delay, but I'm here. (laughs) No problem. And uh, we delayed it till eight, and Dr. O'Malley is going to join us also uh, any moment. So, okay, great. But we'll get started anyway. We already did the disclaimer and we already did the introduction. Oh, have you been here? Have you been here since 720? Myself? Yeah. I got here about 740. Okay, got it. Okay. We, we delayed it to late. Okay, no problem. So what That's I'm going to do is we will, um, uh, we will start now. Um, let's see. We played the, bio, the bios already, and we played the disclaimer already. So I am going to go right into starting to ask you questions, okay? Right. And we're going to also uh, take audience questions as well. Wonderful. Okay. Let's see if our audience is still alert and with us. Okay. So first question, Dr. Curatola, um, for someone that you are, um, wait, I just want to make sure we're recording and everything. Let me ask Nancy, are we all set? Are we recording everything? It says recording. It says recording. Okay. Yes, we are recording and I'm still looking for um, Paul as well. So as soon as he comes on, we'll pull him on. Okay. So Dr. Kirtle, so what is the basic protocol? If someone comes to you and they say, I'm 10 years old and I want my teeth to be good and I'm, you know, give me my advice for the next 25 years. What is the basic one minute protocol about everything from brushing your teeth, flossing, checkups? What are the basic core things you give advice to people of how to take care of their teeth? Yeah, that's a great question, Steve. Um, the first thing is, you know, and I go over this in my book, The Mouth Body Connection. Um, but the the most important thing is I I see the mouth as a mirror of what's going on in the whole body and the gateway. So whether you're 10 years old or you're 100 years old, uh, the protocol is the same. We want to look at um, doing a thorough, um, we want to do a thorough review of their Uh, dental condition and their medical condition, looking at connecting the dots between what's going on in their, in their body and how that might be manifesting in their mouth or how what's in their mouth might be causing some of the problems they have in their body. So for example, at 10 years old, one of the biggest things I look for is airway health. Are they breathing? Are they getting oxygen? The three most important things that children need are good nutrition, of course, of water, hydration, and nutrition. The second thing is oxygen. And the third thing is sleep. And if they have a narrow arch and they have a high palate or they have a very deep bite, this could be affecting their breathing. And that could have profound effects on their systemic health. And what about the protocol of what they're supposed to do? What do you tell them if you're just giving someone the one minute review of what they should do to take care of their teeth? Well, I have uh, four cornerstones, four cornerstones of oral health, right? Um, The first one is, you know, what are they using to take care of their teeth with? Now, that's a whole topic in itself, because there's a lot of, you know, toothpaste was invented by soap makers, essentially, you know, over 150 years ago. And a lot of toothpaste is actually harmful for the mouth. So we want to get them using an understanding that the bacteria in the mouth are an essential part of their immune system, essential part of their digestion, essential part of their, um, even their ability to make nitric oxide. The microbiome in the mouth helps the child and the adult produce nitric oxide, essential for cardiovascular health, essential for immune system health, essential for blood sugar regulation. So we want to look at nutrition. Uh, The other thing we want to look at is any habits they may have, grinding, clenching, and all these things are signs of, of parafunctional habits that are fueled by stress. And a lot of children are overstimulated. You know, they're, they're glued to digital um, digital devices that they never get to turn their nervous system off. They're, they're going hundred and that has, believe it or not, that has effects in the mouth. And then finally, you know, we want every child to have a healthy, um, healthy exercise is just as important for oral health as it is for physical health. So those four cornerstones, you know, what, what oral care products they're using, 
what um, uh, their nutrition is like. Nutrition is a cornerstone of oral health. How they manage stress. Do they de digitally detox? And are they getting healthy exercise? Are four essential foundational things that I want to look at because fixing a filling or, or doing gum treatment or even fixing, as I was just saying, the airway is meaningless unless they have a good protocol at home. So we take the extra time to really go over that. And what is the at-home um, protocol that each person should do? Should they brush their teeth once a day, twice a day, three times a day? Floss Generally twice a day, you know. Um, what And why do you brush your teeth? Well, because food can accumulate. And I was on the Dr. Oz show and he was asking me, should you floss? Should you this? And, you know, should you use inter dental picks or what do we, what do you use? And I said, you know what, what's really the most important thing is like cleaning between your teeth and, you know, the outside surfaces of the teeth, of course, tops of the teeth, inside of the teeth. But, you know, and I, I laugh because most people don't brush their teeth for two minutes and we recommend two minutes. Why? Because you really have to remove food and debris that if it remains, it's like the garbage on uh, in between, you know, tenements on a New York City street in the summer. Eventually, it starts to stink, and then the rats come out. So it destabilizes the balance of the microbiome if you don't adequately clean your teeth. And that's generally twice a day when you wake up from the night before, and also before you go to sleep. And what about flossing? So that? flossing is a good question. I mean, a lot of people don't floss incorrectly. They snap the floss down to the gum and you can actually do harm. So there's been a big controversy over the past five years of to floss or not floss. There are so many new dental devices that are better than that little string that you stick between your teeth. For example, there are interproximal brushes, rubber tips. Um, we have a device uh, in our practice called a water flosser that we recommend to patients that has a rubber tip. And it and so water flossing is kind of like a water pick. And it also helps to remove debris between the teeth without having to use dental floss. And that water floss, should we do that once or twice a day? Twice a day. Is that for the gums or is that? Well, yeah, you know, that's that's also, you know, gums and teeth. Why do you use the water flusser interproximally? Well, you get the debris out that's on the surfaces of the teeth in, in between the teeth. That's interproximal. And what else does a water flusser do? It's like a hydro massage. So it helps to in, improve circulation, stagnancy in the um, tiny little capillaries that are around the teeth in the, in the gingival tissue. So it's almost like a hydro massage in addition to removing um, debris between teeth. So we like it for that reason, because it's hard to massage the gums with a toothbrush. Um, and so these new devices like the water flosser is a very effective oral care tool. Okay, so brushing twice a day, water flossing twice a day. What about tongue cleaning? Is that something? Yes. So, you know, it, that's a simple thing to do. You know, people try to camouflage bad breath in so many different ways with all kinds of products that try to camouflage the symptom and don't get to the root cause. The overbuilding um, of bacterial film on the tongue um, can lead to halitosis, bad breath. So a tongue scraper is a very effective device and most people will be very surprised um, at using that device because you really um, can see all of it. And it's an effective tool because the dorsal part of the tongue, the, the top part of, part of the tongue is loaded with these tiny little um, uh, taste buds, you know, and, and all of these uh, papilla on the surface of the tongue in between there can, uh, a lot of debris can harbor between there and a simple tongue scraping can be really effective and your mouth will feel a lot cleaner too. Once or twice a day with that? Twice. Okay. Do it, do it as a normal routine. You know, and the water flosser is kind of a new tool, uh, but we're big fans of it in our practice. All the doctors and the dental hygienists in our office recommend it because it's really an effective tool for the two reasons that I said, both removing debris and also uh, helping to massage the gums. Um, and what about getting cleanings at a dental office? How often do you recommend that? 
Well, that's that's a very interesting question because, you know, the old they used to say, you know, brush twice a day and see your dentist, uh, uh, brush twice a day and see your dentist twice a year. Well, if you what what we've learned in the in the research that's been done over the years is that for people who are struggling with periodontal issues, by the way, which can be linked to a lot of other systemic problems, um, there is a. Um, you know, they should get their teeth cleaned once a season. So many adult patients should not get their teeth cleaned twice a year. They really should see their dentist once a season. You know, a dental cleaning is one of the most inexpensive dental procedures and the most preventative and good for your health. And what about getting dental x-rays? How often, and assume we're going to a dentist that has the low radiation x-rays, how often do you recommend doing this? You know, um, and and that's oh, that's another very very big debate because dentists, I you know, I unfortunately I find a lot of dentists are X-rays have X-ray happy, and they um, they use um, dental X-rays to look for decay interproximally between the teeth. So they do these bite wing little films um, to look for decay between the teeth, and there are other devices that cause transillumination. So we have devices in our office that actually transilluminate the tooth with light where we could see decay uh, without having to take an x-ray. So a full series of x-rays is recommended once every five years. And really, the technology has moved very, very steadily toward the CBCT, the three-dimensional cone beam, as one of the most effective devices ever introduced in dentistry, it's a 3D look at teeth, bone, and um, in the jaw. Um, there's so many things we could see in a, in a cone beam that could never be seen, even in a panoramic dental x-ray. Now, the 3D cone beam, it's called a 3D cone beam. It's a CAT scan? Yes, it's a CBCT. So it's, um, it's a cone beam computerized tomography. It is a form of a very, very low exposure um, because most it's really um, digital. We don't even need a door um, like you would with um, a CAT scan or, you know, a room that's lead line. So cone beam is very, very low exposure and gives us a phenomenal look 3D at what's going on in the mouth. And you're saying we need this every five years or more often? No, I think, you know, I think cone beam it is fine um, even even longer. I mean, if you're, you know, cone beams are usually taken on demand, um, but instead of a full mouth series, I would do a cone beam uh, um, because a cone beam gives us a better look 3D. Remember, um, X-rays are two-dimensional, they're flat. So instead, yes, I would recommend a cone beam every five years rather than the 18 pictures of the full series. Um, because we're getting a lot more diagnostic information. Okay. Now, just for, I am not, in, I don't know medical or dental, but the word CAT scan to me, you know, means radiation, which means cancer. So how come you and other dentists, um, I understand why if I, from a diagnostic point of view, you'd want a 3D cone beam CAT scan, but why are you not very concerned? Hello, doctor. So, I, want, I want to just say again, a cone beam is, is not a, it's not a CAT scan. It is a, it's computerized tomography. And, uh, and that is, um, is Paul, Paul's in the car. So a cone beam is actually like what I was saying, it's the equivalent to a very, very low exposure CT scan. So how much radiation do you think you're getting if you do a the CD CDCT versus the old CB, CBCT versus a full series, yeah, the cone the cone beam has less less exposure than a full series. That's the amazing thing, is that they've gotten so sophisticated with these devices and the sensors that, as I said, we don't even need to have. You know, uh, in the old days, when you took an X ray, you had to have lead line walls and doors and all this. We don't need any of that now. And is there any technology coming where they're going to get rid of the radiation completely? Um, That's a great question. Good question. 
Um, we're not there yet. There's very few, few, um, the, the cone beam was a huge advance because believe it or not, when we wanted to do a 3d scan, we used to send people for a whole cat scan of their head, maxilla and mandible in the early days of dental implantology. Uh, when we wanted to see if a patient had enough bone to place an implant, they would get mu these much higher exposure, um, uh, 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 radiographic treatments that, have come way, way down.